Well, when I think about uh, Michigan's philanthropy, uh, and I think about the leaders that have been involved in, in the work from, from what I've observed, um, it, 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 you can give it a title. You can give that type of leadership a title, and servant leadership. And some people misinterpret that and think that it's, well, it's modest leadership, it's quiet leadership, and you don't, you don't uh, try to push people, you just sort of try to cultivate. And it's quite the opposite. Uh, servant leadership is uh, getting everybody to do what they ought to do, do the right thing, and have them feel good about it. And when I think about servant leadership in, in the philanthropic sector, I, I think about people who have been able to do huge change in the way philanthropy works and in the way that um, services are delivered, in the way that, that people think about serving their community. And all of those different movements have had a servant leader back there saying, I bet you I can get these five people to do this. And all I need to do is give them a venue, give them a little direction, give them a little seed funding, and they'll do the right thing. And time and time again, you see it. What really doesn't necessarily work in the long run is when, when you see leaders who have put their, foot, their fingerprint on it and said, this group is going to do what I say, and they're going to they're gonna do it in the way that I say it. And then they're surprised when it fails. And because it was never owned by the people involved, so I've watched I've watched servant leaders put resources behind their ideas, put the right people in the room, cultivated the relationships, uh, given them the opportunity to fail, and then accelerated their failure curve, their learning curve, and say, okay, what did you learn from that? And then how do we move forward? And then really invest and engender a lot of trust. Um, and, and that's, I think, been the key to the, to the transformations that, that we've seen over the last 30, 40 years in philanthropy. Because if you were to sit there 50 years ago and say, you know, I think that we should have a community foundation serving every county in Michigan. And I think we should have young people be the key investors first. And I think that... Um, the volunteering rate in, in, in our state should be measured and it should never get below 50%, and giving levels should never be low, below 80%. Uh, I think they would have said that person's nuts, absolutely nuts. You can't possibly do those sort of large institutional, large human behavioral changes on a statewide level. You can't do it. And yet all those things are true in Michigan. And we've got institutions that have endured and they shouldn't have. I mean, if, if, if you looked at it in the beginning, you say, oh my gosh, that's really a quaint idea, but I really don't think it's gonna make it. You know, um, foundations don't play well together. They don't oftentimes uh, see themselves in the same working space. They compete against each other. You'll never get them to agree to an association or any sort of organized way of working together, especially family and private and corporates. They're all so different. The same thing for the nonprofit sector. Oh, you'll never get all those subsectors, education, religion, you know, human services, service clubs, they'll never get around the same table because they're all competing for the same resources. So just forget about it. Don't even worry about it. And here we are, right?